Point of View Politics now. We start with a story that has surprised many. Mandan Republican State Representative Rianne Kelsch revealed today her family did not pay federal or state income taxes between 2004 and 2009. The chairwoman of the North Dakota House's Education Committee says she learned of the problem when she was hit with a $300,000 bill from the government. Kelsch says her husband handled the family finances and that he has undergone treatment for cancer and depression. She took responsibility for the situation. Now tonight, what may be a first in Republican politics in North Dakota, PSC Commissioner Kevin Kramer says he'll take the Republican endorsement in his race for Congress, but even without it, he's still moving ahead. Chris Berg from 1100 The Flag has Kevin Kramer in the hot box. Thanks, Robert. Uh, earlier this morning on my radio show, Public Service Commissioner Kevin Kramer made the announcement he's going to forego the North Dakota Public Republican Convention and go straight into the primary. Never happened before in the state. He's with us tonight in the hot box. Kevin, thanks for joining me. For those people maybe that are just coming home from work, haven't sure. heard the news, what is the big announcement exactly? <laughs> well, what I said was is that I'm going to seek the Republican nomination to be my party's candidate for the United States House of Representatives by going straight to the Republican primary on June 12th, bypassing the state endorsing convention, which is the last couple of days of March and April 1st. That's the tradition, is to get the party endorsement. Then there's a one-party candidate in the primary, and, and that's the way it's been done for many years. I've decided to forego that, go straight to the electorate, invite hundreds of thousands, hopefully, of North Dakota Republicans into this process. I want to get to the specifics of why. That's the question. Sure. Obviously, many people are asking. Before we get to that, I want to start here because there's a lot of rumors going around, people saying certain things, and one of those is a person that you're in this race with, Public Service Commissioner Brian Kalk. He's also uh, vying for this U.S. House seat here in North Dakota. And I want to quote him from what he sent out uh, earlier this morning. Our opponent, obviously meeting you, our opponent did the math and realized that he simply could not win the endorsement. A lot of people are saying that. Look, the reason you're foregoing this convention is because you can't win the endorsement there. Well, the first thing I would say, Chris, is that there are no delegates yet, so I don't know what kind of math a guy could have done or what kind of math Brian has done, but he's worked hard. But you and I both know. People are making phone calls. They're calling people, making the ass, saying, sure. hey, are you going to support me at the convention? Sure, and, and assuming that they get elected to the convention and all of that. But the reality is I've done the math, and I've decided that there are about 150,000 people in North Dakota who consider themselves Republican, and I'm inviting all of them into this process and foregoing the convention hall for an election hall. Rather than 1,000 to 1,500 people making the decision, we're a state on the grow. We're a party that ought to be on the grow. And I'm just prying those doors open and saying, come on in. We need all of you. Let's have a real grassroots effort and include more people. There's a great quote from a movie, Miracle. It says, the name on the front of the jersey is a heck of a lot more <laughs> important than the name on the back. And what I mean is I think there's people out there saying, hey, Kevin's thinking his name is more important than the Republican name on the front. A lot of people that have spent a lot of hours volunteering for phone calls, knocking on, phone, uh, knocking on doors, saying, wait a second, this is a big slap in the face to us and this typical process with the North Dakota GOP, you say? I say think of all of those people that have never been able to come to a convention, that don't have the time, don't have the resources. It's expensive to come to a convention. Those people who want to have something to say about this historic election, which, Chris, let's remember, just yesterday Politico announced that the, this race is a high-targeted race of Nancy Pelosi's in her quest to become the Speaker of the House again. Barack Obama has to be stopped. His congressional allies have to be stopped. We, this race is not about me. It's not about a convention. In fact, it's really not about a process at all. It's about principles and about a platform. And I think we need to invite more people in. But aren't those people the core of the Republican Party? Aren't those the people that have been there through thick and thin, going out and doing the hard work? And again, you would say to them what specifically? Sure, they are. And I suspect that they'll continue to be that, along with a whole bunch of other other people. But let's let's share that burden with 100,000 Republicans instead of with 1,000 Republicans. Democracy is really what this is all about. And democracy demands greater participation. I'm just providing that opportunity. Are you going to go to the convention in Bismarck the end of March? I don't expect that I will. We'll work through that, I guess, as we get closer. We need this firestorm to kind of work its way through. I expected that. I don't want to do anything that further disrespects in, in the minds of the party officers and faithful. I'm available to them. I'm a Republican. After June 12th, We'll all be in this together, of course. This is the way every other state does it. It's the way they do it in Minnesota. Uh, I expect that uh, I expect everything will be just fine on June 13th. Why do it now versus maybe right before the convention or question. later? Yeah, that's a good question. Because I think to, to respect, again, the delegates, the, those party faithful, I wanted to let everybody know before the delegates were selected that this was my, this was my intention. I think a number of times, including in the, this last election, 
candidates who lose at the at the convention, maybe finish second, third, fourth, whatever, that they would then take their sour grapes and enter the enter the uh, the primary. I wanted to be honest with people. I'm nothing, if, as you know, if not transparent. And so I just thought this was a more a better way to do it with integrity, Chris. You've had a few hours now since you came on my radio sure. show and made the big announcement. Have you been taking a lot of spears, or what have it, what's been the feedback? <laughs> well, you know, I feel a little bit like Mitt Romney. Everybody that's following you shoots you from behind, you know. But but the reality is, is that for the most part, it's been very favorable. In fact, I expected the worst, Chris. I was prepared for a real awful firestorm today, to be honest, and it's not been that at all. I've, I've had a lot of support. Frankly, the only, you know, most of the people that have, have sort of fired back or pushed back are people that didn't, didn't support me. So on behalf of their choice, they're upset. Well, I do commend you for stepping out and saying, hey, I'm going to go out there and be a pioneer in this process. Again, never done in the history of the state of North Dakota to do it at least at this point before the convention. So thanks for being with me in the hot box. My question for you tonight out there is this, is when you think about the normal machinations of a GOP process, this convention, is that the best thing for North Dakota, or is what Kevin Kramer doing, stepping outside of that and saying, hey, I don't want just 1,500 people to elect me, I want 100,000 people to show up in the primary and say, I want to represent you here in the great state of North Dakota. Is that the better way to go, in your opinion, for yourself, your family, and the great state of North Dakota? Robert?